The one who loved us and gave himself for us, we thank you for your kindness, your mercy, and for bringing us here to this place where we can draw close to you and you can draw close to us. I pray, dear Lord, that you would open our minds and our hearts and our spirits. Help us, O Lord, to receive your word as you desire to fill our hearts with yourself. We ask for your mercy and hear us when we say through the intercession of St. Mary, our beloved Mother, and all our saints, when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It's our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone grab a seat. Welcome to the Mount Tabor meeting. You guys know why it's Mount Tabor, right? Because on the Transfiguration, they went to Mount Tabor and they saw the glory of Christ. So this, this is Mount Tabor. So we are starting a new season today. A fast starting today, the fast of St. Mary. Who doesn't love to talk about mothers and the amazing things they do? The examples of sacrifice, how they're willing to do whatever is necessary and best for their children. We are so blessed to have such a heavenly mother in heaven. She loves to hear us call on her from our hearts. She desires for us to draw closer to her son, our Savior. Do you guys call on St. Mary frequently? You should. You should just call on her. Um, it should be a frequent practice, and it's actually our heritage. This is a prayer from one of the hymns in the Coptic Church from around 300 A.D., we fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. That's from around 300 AD. So it's not something new that we made up. This is our tradition. Every, how many of you are moms? How many of you love when your children call upon you? Okay, not between 11 p.m. and like 4 a.m., but other than that, Mom, you love to hear their voice, right? She goes by many names. Our Lady, the Queen of Heaven, the Mother of Light, the Advocate for the Human Race. But what I want to speak to you about today is one title. It's a title that we all know. We sing about it in our hymns, and we probably think about it. But it's one that we should also carry it's not, we don't need to carry the name theologically as St. Mary did, but it's very similar in meaning. Oops. What am I doing wrong? Is that the right one? Yeah. Theotokos. Theo is God. Tokos is bear. She is the God bear. We call her the God bear all the time. What our mother in heaven was called to do physically, to bear God, we are called to do spiritually. Yes, we are called to be God bearers. There's no doubt about it. I want to share a verse with you that resembles this, just so you know. St. Paul says in Galatians, my children, I am again suffering labor pains like giving birth, for you until Christ is formed in you. I think it's very interesting the word he uses, laboring in birth, until Christ is formed or born in you. Isn't that what happened by St. Mary? That Christ, who was eternal, he got his flesh from St. Mary, his humanity and his divinity were united, and that union was formed in her. The union of God and man happened in in St. Mary. Believe it or not, St. Paul wants the same thing to happen to us, the union of God and man in us, till Christ is formed in us. What does that mean, that he's formed in us? Not that he's reborn, but that the image of Christ is created in us, that people will see we are Christ-like. That's what he's telling us we are called to do. And actually, that's what God wanted from the beginning. From the beginning, it says, for those whom he foreknew, 
Meaning before we were even created, it says he predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. We were called to be this from before you were ever born. When you were born, you were born for this purpose. That Jesus Christ would be formed in you, that you would be the image of Jesus Christ. And this is what the church teaches us every single morning. When you read the Agbeya, there's a Pauline epistle, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. He says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. So every one of us received a calling. He says, you need to walk worthy of that calling with which you were called. With all lowliness and gentleness, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called and one hope you're calling. He says, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. In you all. You have received a calling as a Christian. And he's saying, now that you receive this calling, it's a responsibility to be worthy of this calling. And to be worthy of this calling is actually to walk in lowliness, gentleness, meekness, patience enduring one another just like Christ did for us this is one of my favorite quotes by St. Augustine and this is kind of what it means to be like Christ or in his image he says a Christian is a mind through which Christ thinks a heart through which Christ loves a voice through which Christ speaks and a hand through which Christ helps this is what we are called to be. This is how Christ could be formed in us, thinking the way He does, loving the way He does, speaking the way He does, and helping the way He does. Now, we are to carry Christ to the whole world, no matter where we are, no matter what the circumstances. Christ-bearer is a term that we can often embrace, the idea of being a Christ-bearer. When you were called to be Christian, you were called to bear Christ to the world. St. Mary did it in her body for the salvation of the world. Today, I want you to realize you are being called as God-bearers as well. So, in order for us to be God-bearers, well, let's look at St. Mary's example. How did she become a Christ-bearer? First, there was an angelic greeting. Archangel Gabriel came to her, and if this happens to any of you where you get an angelic greeting, please let me know. I would love to hear more about it. You may not get the angelic greeting. It's not the most common way. But we do already have someone, Christ, who called us to himself to be his children, and he gave us his spirit to dwell in us so that we could become God-bearers. So we already have the calling. And having come in, the angel said to her, sorry, and having come in, it said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. She considered what manner of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. That was her calling. And this is ours. The idea that we must be free ourselves to be filled with God. We have to free ourselves. Even God cannot fill what is already full. So if we are to become God-bearers, there is a requirement that we should become empty. So Mary, in the dialogue with the angels, she said, How could this be? I don't know a man. Which is actually a very good question. I mean, if you think about it. Angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Power of the highest will overshadow you. The Holy One will be, who is to be born will be called Son of God. She's like, what? Okay, I, I don't get it. The Holy Spirit's going to come on me and overshadow me. And the power of the highest is going to come on me and I'm going to have a son. And his name will be Son of God, the Most High. What? Does that make sense to you? If, if you receive that, 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 for the men, definitely that should not make sense. But even for the women... The work of God was critical in all of this. In Mary becoming a Christ bearer, it wasn't her initiation. It was God who initiated it. It was accepted by her. She could not do any of this on her own. 
Okay, I got her call. I'm gonna have an amazing son. Let's get married. Boom. Okay, that's. You know what? She didn't even ask how. She didn't even ask how it's gonna happen to be a God bearer. How? In the church, we believe that all these works of being transformed are by the grace of God. The grace of God, the power of the Most High, came on her. Every prayer, every sincere repentance, the calling on the name of the Lord cannot happen without the Holy Spirit working inside of you. You say, okay, I want it. I want all of this. Let me be a God-bearer, a light to the world. I want the aroma of Christ in all places I want it. Hopefully you do. Then the next part is critical. Then Mary said something which I think is extremely important. Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. One of the most important Verses that have ever been said of mankind because what if she said no? I would have been looked really bad So this is the height of vulnerability She became vulnerable. She emptied herself She emptied so that her womb could be filled by God. She could have said I Don't completely understand the Holy Spirit's gonna come on me overshadowing me, but this is what she said he made me. He's the one who fashioned me. He's the one that made me for this. So who am I to say no to God? When God calls you for something, who are you to say no? You know, like your children, you're like, you've given them everything. You, you have a plan for them. You fashioned for them everything. And when they say no, you're like, I want this for you. This is for your good. If she didn't say no, and that's a... By the way, to be the mother of the Son of God, that's a big responsibility, okay? That, that's a lot. There's some risks in it, but she didn't say, well, let me think about it. She said, okay. She says, I'm going to be a mom. I, I don't really know anyone. I wanted to, she had a plan. She was serving in the temple her whole life. She had a plan, but she says, I know that God's plan is better. I don't even know a man, but you know what? I'm going to be a mom. I'll just empty myself. This is what she's pretty much said. She says, not my will, but thy will be done. Does that sound familiar? Not my will, but thy will be done. Where do we hear that? Prayer. Jesus Christ's prayer on the final night of his life. The other most important, probably the most important saying, not my will, but thy will be done. It seems to me that the fulfilling of God's purposes for our salvation when Christ obeyed the Father and St. Mary obeyed God, it always seems to happen when people say these words, not my will, but thy will be done. Let it be according to your word. I'm going to trans translate it to you in very simple terms. It means, do whatever you have to to me. Whatever it takes by God's work in me, I want you to make me ready. Whatever you see fit. In medical terms, and spiritually, it's like saying, God, do whatever you have to do to me. You be the surgeon. Here's the scalpel. Go ahead, do whatever it takes in me. This is a tough prayer. But you have the knife. Carve out, take out, shape in me whatever is necessary so that I could be yours. That I could be ready for your purpose. Here is the scalpel. Are you willing to pray that prayer? It could be a tough prayer. You see, no one can cure your heart. No one will be able to cure your heart as much as the one who made it. And this is where the emptying begins. We must free ourselves to be filled with God. Even God cannot fill what is full. Can you now say this, Lord, I want to be empty. Remove my pride. Use your scalpel. Remove the pride. Because oftentimes I want to be praised, I want to be honored, we all want to be loved by someone and respected and treated well. And a lot of us want to be kind of like, like God. Wait a minute, who's God? He is. He's the one that should be honored and praised and loved and respected, but we want that. Wait a minute. So maybe he will need to humble us in order for us to be ready. Well, that humbling could be painful. By the way, with surgery, for those of you who have been through surgery, can be a little painful, right? Sometimes we need to pray this prayer, Lord, teach me that the world doesn't revolve around my desires. 
and my needs and my hurts my career my family my plan most of us think that the whole world is about my family and what i want for them and my plans for my life actually it doesn't believe it or not maybe we should pray this prayer lord how can i be your image how can i spread your fragrance when i have dislikes of many people there's a lot of people i just i don't like i judge a lot of people i look down at a lot of people I've got anger towards people, inside and outside, I've got anger. Okay, take away my judging. Take away the fences that I've set up. Uh, because how can you bear Christ to others when you have all these fences, and you're judging, and you're angry? You can't bear Christ to anyone like that. All those things have to be removed, so then you could be a bearer of God to them. Now, this scalpel, it doesn't just remove things, but it actually sculpts things too like reconstruction surgery. He'll have to not only remove certain things, the judges, the fences, the anger, the pride, the jealousy, but sometimes he needs to plant things inside. Maybe he needs to carve out mercy in you to remove judgment. Maybe he needs to plant gentleness in you to cure your anger. Maybe he needs to add purity to cure our lustfulness, our charity. He needs to put charity in our hearts to cure our selfishness and our greed. Maybe we just need to say, Lord, I have wounds. Take them away. Then you have to receive God. We need to be filled and receive Him. St. Mary, she, received, she was emptied. She made herself empty, but then she received God. We also need to be open to this, to open our hearts to receive God. Open yourself to Him. Receive Him frequently in communion. But don't take communion. Receive communion. Oftentimes we don't prepare to receive communion. We just take it. We take it and go. We're in this very crowded church in this long line waiting for our turn. We're just like trying to get in and get in the line and get out. We're just taking it. But we're not receiving it. If you're receiving it, you're preparing for it from the night before. How do you receive the one whom the heavens cannot contain? How do you do that? Do you just take it? No. That requires preparation. You're going to have the divine fire in your sinful soul. Don't you need to prepare for that? We're supposed to prepare from the night before, thinking and contemplating what you are going to receive inside of you. You want to receive God, the Almighty God, then receive Him. Don't take Him. Receive Him. Accept Him. Plead for Him to come into you so that He might do something in you. Receive His words as honey and treasure. When you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, oftentimes we read it and close it. Or you just slide the app and you go to the next app, right? It's on your phone, right? But when do we receive the Word of God as the Word of God? Like God the Father, God the Son, they're speaking to you from heaven through that word. Are you receiving it or you're just passing it by, page by page? Mary, in order to have Christ in her, she had to be emptied and she had to receive. It's important for us to be emptied of all those negatives, but we also have to be willing to receive. Are you willing to receive God into your life and expand your life and do things for Him? Mary actually was of very little words. She didn't speak much, at least in the Bible. It says she meditated on these things and she pondered them. You want to know why? Because she's always receiving. The day you had communion, you had your coffee, does that mean you just go along the rest of your day? Or do you go and focus and say, wow, I just received God the Almighty in my heart. Does that make a difference to you? She was pondering. She wasn't speaking a lot. She would be quiet and meditate on the things that she received. They say when the angel left her, she conceived. Okay? It wasn't before the meeting, but when he left her, she conceived. God was implanted in her. She had received and been filled. Then what? Okay. All right, now the baby's inside. I've got a baby. Okay, now what? The next part is go radiate Christ and diffuse. Diffuse the fragrance of Christ. So it says, Now Mary arose in those days while she was pregnant. She was, I think, about six months pregnant. 
rose in those days, went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. She entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth, who was a relative. She served in her, sorry, in her first trimester. She traveled, so in her first trimester, how many of you remember first trimester? That one's not fun, right? That's the one where you're vomiting and sick, whatever. She traveled to go to see Elizabeth and to serve an elderly woman who was going to have birth. You know what's amazing? She was becoming like Christ before Christ was even born. There's a verse in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2.15, it says, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We are God's fragrance. The idea that when you come into a room, you, often, a lot of times you can recognize someone by their fragrance. They wear the same perfume or cologne. Can people recognize Christ is in the room when you are in the room? Do they feel, wow, Christ was just here? That would be the fragrance of Christ. That's what we need to be. So she received him, then she began to change. Her womb was sanctified. Christ received his body from her. I wonder if her heart and her spirit were changed. Her heart must have been, she's now attached to God the divine. Like, how amazing is that? She was being transformed by the union of being filled with God. We will also be transformed by being filled with God. So today, I just have one message for you. I want to remind you, we are God bearers. We are Christ bearers. We've received the calling already. You get it from an angel, that's great. The rest of us, we've all received the calling. But in order for us to continue, we have to begin to say, not my will, but thy will be done. Empty me. Here's a scalpel. Do whatever is necessary for me to become the person you want to be. Then receive him. Be filled by him. And then begin to radiate him. I found this prayer. It's actually a beautiful prayer. I like it. Um, and I want us to pray it together. So I'm, believe it or not, I actually am done speaking. What I want us to do, I don't know if you'll be, can you guys see that? If you all stand, you can't see it, right? Okay, from where you are, let's just pray this prayer together because this prayer, and you can find it online, you, radiating Christ. That's the name of the prayer. It's letting Christ radiate through you. I love this prayer, um, so I want us to, to pray it together and then we'll stand up and pray. Dear Jesus, help me to spread, you can read it with me. Help me to spread your fragrance wherever I go. Flood my soul with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that my life may only be a radiance of yours. Shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel your presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Stay with me, and then I shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be a light to others. The light, O oh Jesus, will be all from you. None of it will be mine. It will be you shining on others through me. Let me thus praise you the way you love best by shining on those around me. Let me preach you without preaching, not by words, but by my example, by the catching force of the sympathetic influence of what I do, the evident fullness of the love my heart bears to you. Amen. It's a beautiful prayer that if you guys want to receive God and be filled with God and radiate God, pray this prayer. Let's stand up and pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, I thank you, dear Lord, for giving us, your children, a mother in heaven who pleads to you on our behalf, who always is watching over us, her children, and your children. We thank you, dear Lord, for always desiring the best for us. I pray, dear Lord, that you would open our minds and our hearts, give us the courage to pray that faithful prayer. Let it not be my will, but your will be done. Help us, O Lord, to be open to receiving and accepting what you need to do in our lives to make us ready to receive you. I pray, dear Lord, that you would fill us so much that we are overflowing with your love and your kindness and your mercy and your forgiveness and your generosity and your just desire to, to bring everyone to heaven. 
I pray for this group. I pray, dear Lord, that they're already shining your light, but I pray that it would be so bright that no one would be able to turn away. I ask, dear Lord, for the work that you have begun in each and every one of us. Don't stop. Don't stop. I know there's a lot more to do. Take what you must and give what you must. I want that for all of us. Uh, bless this group. Bless this church. Let your spirit radiate through everyone's lives that come here. Through the intercession of our beloved Mother in Heaven, St. Mary, and through all the saints who have radiated you to the whole world, hear us when we, your children, cry unto you with one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one through Christ Jesus our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, we're starting the fast of St. Mary today. Start to radiate to others. Ask about others and visit others and you know I just heard some people in our congregation uh, have recently been diagnosed with cancer okay so what I think we should do we're brothers and sisters let's pray let's pray for those who've been diagnosed with cancer in the next and ask St. Mary to watch over them and put uh, ask her son to put his healing hands on them okay and if you have prayer requests let us know let us know we're here as a church we pray for each other we lift each other up we guide each other we walk with each other right Amen. Have a blessed week. Don't forget to pray.